Greetings, Commanders. This is Commander Atlas Rand. I'm recording this video, and hopefully it'll be four or five short videos when it's done. So if you see a part number, whatever, in the title, then that's what I did. If it's just a single video, well, it probably isn't all that short. But uh, the video I want to record is taking one of my accounts that has not gone through PowerPlay 2.0 at all yet, and going through it and describing what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and why I think it's probably the best way to go. Although this is all brand new. So if I do something, I think it's the best way to do it. It could turn out to not be the best way. The comments will help decide, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, let's start. So the, the uh, account that I'm using here uh, does have a carrier um, and does have plenty of money. So keep that in mind, but otherwise it's brand new to PowerPlay 2.0. So we'll skip the introduction, which no one probably reads. And this character mostly is a trucker account. So when I need to haul things back and forth, whenever there's a community goal, this is going to be the character that flies in the, uh, the carrier and then hauls material. So I'm gonna look at my options for who has the best rewards for hauling. Now, Mahon, I think is probably one of those characters. 25% um, award trade bond on sales in your power territory. This is definitely a good thing because getting a 25% increase in profit for anything you sell, although it's only if you sell it to a station, this does not work. I don't believe it works anyway, correct me if I'm wrong if you sell things to a carrier that's parked in his territory. I think this is only true of stations in his territory, but 25% bonus is quite good. 50% award for trade bonds for rare good sales. Okay, so this is increasing something which is less consequential than the 25% on total sales. The problem with the rare goods is you can only buy a small number of them at a time. I think the largest number is 128 per visit. So you could, and we certainly have uh, loaded up a lot of these goods over multiple purchase runs into a carrier and then brought a whole carrier of them. Well, not a whole carrier, but uh, brought them in a carrier to sell. But this is a fairly time consuming activity. I think you can earn more just from trading normal materials at a much higher volume than the um, rare goods. Um, that's a normal thing. Minor fracture, whatever, doesn't matter. Reduced rebuy, doesn't matter. Okay, reduced rebuy, that kind of doesn't matter. And the rest of this is shared between all the powers. So really his thing is 25% trade bond. Uh, the other character, let's see, let's check what Pervan does, he does. 50% increase in technology commodity profits in your power territory. Okay. 30% increase in organics data sales. Now that's, um, I mean, it's actually probably quite a bit of money, but I think that's currently turned off as of the time I'm making this video. I think it's a 0% increase. Um, or at least, uh, no, it's probably, it, this isn't turned off, but what's turned off is getting merits from selling organics data, because I guess too many people were doing that. Uh, minor faction increase, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Okay, well, that's still fairly limited. I, I kind of like what Mahan had better. Let's see, look at Petraeus has bounty payouts. 80% bounty is almost as good as um, Arisa Living Duvall. She's at 100%. Um, but that's all she really has. He also has cheaper rearming prices, uh, cheaper weapon module prices to buy. So that might not be a bad trade out deal. Although I, I prefer the, I think still staying with her for the other account. The cattle cane, that's the new one. So rebuy doesn't matter. Don't care. Uh, okay. 50% increase in mining commodity profits. So this is a real question mark right here because what a lot of people do is they just buy the mined materials and then they sell them to fulfill mining contracts. 
So if this simply means that anything that can be mined can be sold for a 50% increase in profit, that is a, that potentially could be a lot of money. Uh, this I don't care about and that I don't care about. So that's really the only thing with her. Uh, Archer was what? Rebuy, increase. Okay, so he's the other guy that has the increased bounty payouts. Um, so he is almost an exact duplicate of uh, Arissa, except that he is not in the Empire. Boo. We like the Empire. So, okay, well, that's reasonable. Um, Li Yong has the rebuy doesn't matter. So 100% increase in exploration data. That's a good increase. However, that data does not pay much at all. You could go from the bubble to Colonia, scanning everything along the way, and you're going to show up in Colonia with probably 30 million worth of data. Or you could just stop halfway between the bubble and Colonia, scan two plants, and show up with over 100 million. So the plant scanning is uh, biologicals. It pays out so much more than this. So even though this is a good percentage, it's not a great deal. Rearm, refuel, repair. I mean, it's nice that they're free, but also they don't cost very much at all. Nothing costs much for any of those three. And I prefer to do that on my carrier anyway. 25% awarded trade bond on sales in your power surgery. Now that's pretty good. That was the same thing that we saw in, uh, was it Edmund that had that? Yeah. So Mahan has 25% trade bond. And then he has the, the bonus for the rare goods as well. So he is pretty comparable then to Leon, but Leon also has the 100% exploration data. Uh, Alicia, 60% increase on food. Nope. Not interesting. Not interesting. Not interesting. Okay. And I think this was the other one I was going to look at. So, reduce rebuy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 45% increase in mining versus 50 for Nakato. But um, also a 50% increase in Imperial slave commodity profits which uh, obviously you got to be an empire to do safely. And then 20% awarded trade bonds and sales in your power territory. So instead of 25, which is what Lee has, Zamila has a 20%, slightly less on all sales, but the possibility for higher pricing for slaves and a 45% increase in mining commodity profits. So... If you're actually mining, this probably would be good because um, it means you can sell mine the materials. And let, let if the top materials right now uh, are selling for, I'm not even sure, I think, let me look what the Alexandrite was selling for. I think they were, Alexandrite was one of the higher um dollar items for sale it's 761 right now there's a few more expensive monazite muscovite are both over 800 now not everywhere but in specific systems if you do a search you can find people buying for that and uh rod plums might um site rod plums site is also over 800 so multiply that by 45 percent increase and that could be a very substantial difference maker because instead of selling a uh, cargo load for 100 million, you'd be able to sell a cargo loan for 145 million if that's the way it works. I'm not 100% sure. I am sort of tempted though to try her because having both the trade bond and just general sales and the increase to the mining, even though both of these are slightly less than other um than the other powers may be worth it because with lee we get 25 instead of 20 and well like i said unfortunately the increased exploration data just doesn't account for a whole lot of money 
And with Kane, we get the search and rescue payout increase, which don't want to do that. Not interested. Can't do a lot of it at once. You can only do it in small little chunks. Faction increase doesn't really matter, but it is 50% on mining. Or what was the other one? I said the uh, Mahone 25 trade and then 50 on rare goods, but that's like, I don't, I've never made that much on rare goods. I'm trying to think, and I've been selling a lot of them lately. And I think the most that I've sold uh, recently was for, I think I sold them for about three or four, maybe 4 million. So instead of 4 million, it'd be five and a half million. I, just not all that much. Um, and that's the other thing is none of the rare goods sell for very much money. They're all under 20,000 credits. So whereas if you're talking about uh, some of the uh, mining materials, you know, they sell for almost a million a piece. So that's a, that's a big argument for Zamina. Uh, not a fan of what she looks like, <laughs> but uh, what do you do? So I think it's kind of going to be between her and uh, Leong Nikato's kind of a one-trick pony. Lee doesn't have the mining. He's gonna, I think I'm going to have to go with her. For a character that mostly buys and sells, Getting that 20% trade bond on sales is going to be good. And if this applies to all mined materials, which I think there are 40 of them that you can mine, that's a pretty large segment of the overall trade. So if this is applies to a price increase on all 40 of those materials, and I guess we'll find out, um, but the other thing to remember is the values listed here are maximum values. So at level 100 or maybe 95 or something, you will hit this. You'll be able to get 45%. But level 100 is 700,000 merits, or I think it's 750,000 merits. It's a long ways off. We're talking months and months and months of gameplay. So, yeah. I think um, for both the trade award and this, they're going to start off much smaller. This will probably start at 5%. This may start at 10%. Maybe, maybe five as well. And then as you get higher up uh, and you have more merits, then both of those would slowly go up. This one to 20, this one to 45, this one to 50. Um, yeah, let's do it. I think for trade characters, Amina is going to be the right one. Ledging away. Okay. I'm a guy, so I'm not going to read any of this stuff, but you should. <laughs> All right, so now we are with the old hag. I mean, Zamina, our uh, uh, our boss here. And we've got five assignments. So that's the, the next task to do is to unlock these five things. Now, I've done this for two other characters already, so I kind of know a little bit of what I'm doing. Not to say that zero mistakes will be made. Um, sell rare goods in acquisition systems. I know what to do for that one. That's not a hard one. Mm, collect bounties in reinforcement systems. I know what to do there. Um, that just means going out to a uh, a mining site, um, like a low or a high, probably not a hazardous, but probably, I mean, 486, that's like two ships in a low or one ship in a high so that, that should be very quick and easy. It was the last few times. Scan ships and wakes in reinforcement, in reinforcement system. Same place as going to the, um, the hazardous mining site. Um, just scan ships. Scan 12 ships there. This will be done. So scan 12. 
kill two, probably. Rescue escape pods from reinforcement. Now, you could do this also in the, um, the, the hazardous uh, mining site areas. However, it's, I found that it takes longer to actually kill enough ships to get 10 of these escape pods. So I think I got one or two that method. And then I just started scanning down. Um, and I have a video on what to scan down. It's a new signal type that specifically has a few escape pods in it. So it makes it easier to get them. And then transports power commodities to under mining systems. And all this is, um, and again, obviously I'm going to do all these five steps in the video so you'll see it, but I'm just summarizing it. All this is, is going to the headquarters system, getting 10 of these um, undermining contracts or whatever they're called, and then flying just across the border to a system that is controlled by a different power, but it's right on the edge of your power and turning them in to the uh, power agent and that system. So none of these take a particularly long time to do. Probably the escape pods is going to take the longest. Maybe the sell rare goods in acquisition systems will. Um, but they are, they're all pretty straightforward. So right now I have just got done picking up a bunch of the rare goods. So I've got a carrier with some of those on them. We're going to jump and I know carriers take about an hour to jump right now, hopefully less by the time you're watching this video. So while the carrier is waiting to jump, I can probably take care of four out of five of these fairly quickly. And only one of these, this collection bounty and reinforcement systems, that's the only one that requires a ship with guns. Everything else does not require guns. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up part one. Part two, we're actually going to start doing the missions.